we finally made it to the big 5-0. So what does this mean, guys? Well, it means that we are going to be doing a special video. Hey, what's going on, geeks? Max of the Beast is here. And welcome to my 50th subscriber special. Now today, we're going to be doing something much different than we normally do in my other specials. Today, we're going to be reacting to why you should not kill house centipedes, I know, pretty random, by Faxverse, a channel with over 6 million, million subscribers. Now, I know this is a bit random, but since I've already done stuff like reacting to old videos and things like that, I decided to try to mix it up a bit and do something a bit, you know, different. So, the link to this video will be in the description below. Please check out the original creator. And with that being said, oh, we're going to be doing things differently than we do... I did my normal reaction videos where I used to like pause the video and just talk about what's going on. I'm still going to pause the video and talk about what's going on, but I'm going to actually cut over to gameplay. So it's going to be structured similar to things like Max is the Beast on the internet. Anyway, that being said, let's get to the video. Why you should not kill house centipedes. Number one, they're clean bugs. It may sound strange, however, house centipedes are clean. They don't clean themselves like a house cat does, however, they do take pride in their legs, all 15 pairs. After a centipede eats, it will drag its legs from base to tip around. They even curl up, making sure to reach every leg. Wait, wait, hold up, hold up. This right here is a giant desert centipede. And those things are not good to be in your house. And if you see one in your house, you should try to get rid of it by any means necessary. Don't believe me? Well, there's a YouTube channel called Coyote Peterson, or rather, Brave Wilderness, who is famous for making videos on strange wildlife. But his most famous series is him getting bitten or stung by all sorts of things. He's been stung by most of the wasp and things on the sting pain index, been stung by the bullet ant, and he's also been bitten by things like the alligator, like alligators and snapping turtles. So he's been through a lot of painful things, and he's not really afraid of a lot of these creatures. But the giant desert centipede is one of the few creatures that he actually is afraid of, because most of the giant centipedes and the giant desert centipede in particular, it has one of the most excruciating bites of any insect in the world. And I've done some research on centipedes, and some people can have allergic reactions to centipede bites because of the venom that is found in the centipede's fangs. So that means, not only is it going to hurt a lot, but if you're allergic to it, you could have some severe, a severe reaction to it. Which, with any allergy, could kill you. So these things are not safe to have in your house, by any means. All of their food is off their legs. If this insect hears a loud noise, he'll get startled. However, he will wait until it's quiet again, and then he will resume cleaning until all of his legs are nice and clean. Of all the bugs in the insect world, the centipedes are by far the cleanest. If you have to let a bug inside your home, you're better off with it being a centipede. Okay, I honestly don't care if the thing is clean. Okay, at least it's not going to be spreading disease or, you know, things like that. But... I still don't want this thing in my house. I don't care if it's clean. It's a bug, and it doesn't exactly look like your typical house creature. To somebody who doesn't know that, oh, this is a house centipede, they might think it's a, you know, pest. They might think it's harmful, 
or that your house is unsanitary because this thing's in it. Okay? So I don't care if the thing actually cleans itself or whatever. It's still a problem. Because I don't want these things in my house. There's bugs I don't care about. Being in the house like stink bugs, they don't do anything. They just kind of, you know, exist. But the giant desert centipede, I don't want in my house, so I don't really want the house centipede in there either. Because, well, what if the thing can bite me? What if it, you know, can eat my clothes like a moth or something? You haven't exactly given me any thing, any details on what the thing does yet. Just that it's clean. So I don't care if it's clean. It doesn't matter. It's in my house. It looks weird. So, like I said to unsuspecting people, it looks like a house pest. So, even though I know it's a house centipede, others may not. And besides, you haven't exactly told me what it does yet. Honestly, if you're trying to win me over to the idea that I should be sparing these things and letting these things live in my house, you should start off your argument by telling me, you know, instant benefits to why I should let them live. You know, like, oh, how is this going to help me in the long run? Right off the bat, instead of just starting off your argument with, oh, they're clean insects. They clean themselves. That's not exactly the greatest argument. As there's still really no benefit to having them in there. You know? Anyway, back to the video. Centipedes will keep your home bug free. Most people don't want centipedes in their home because they're large, creepy, they have 15 pairs of legs. Uh, there are other bugs that can find their way into your home also, and they're not cute at all. Spiders, ants, cockroaches, termites, bed bugs, they can all wreak havoc on your home. If you have to choose one bug to live in your home, use the centipede. Centipedes love midnight snacks. However, you won't need to worry about them snacking on your food the way that the cockroaches and ants do. The snacks that centipedes love are the very bugs that have invaded your home, like the cockroaches and ants. They are mostly insects in your home. Once again, that is a giant centipede. And these things are not safe to have around. I don't care if the giant centipedes can kill house pests. Themselves are dangerous. The centipedes are dangerous. The house centipede, okay, maybe it kills pests. But there's a better way to exterminate pests. You know what that's called? It's called bug spray, a fly swatter, or a shoe. So I don't care if a giant centipede or a house centipede can kill pests. After all, if it is an actual giant centipede in my house, I'd honestly take the roach over it. Because at least the roach, I can kill myself and its bite isn't bad. But the centipede, I don't care if it kills roaches, it's still a problem. And it could hurt me. A lot. So, no. I don't care if the centipede's clean or if it kills pests. The giant centipedes are a no-go wherever. I will get rid of them if I find them in my house. And with house centipedes, like I said, there's better ways of clearing out pests than relying on a centipede. Because after all, one centipede cannot possibly patrol and kill all of the creatures that can be found in my house. Like, it can't take care of all the roaches. Suppose my house is infested with roaches. I'm sure that one tiny centipede isn't going to handle four or five larger centipedes. Or not centipedes, larger roaches. You know? Anyway, back to the video. If you have just one species of centipede in the home, then five or six different species who cause all sorts of problems. Number three, they're harmless. Unlike some other bug sorts of problems. Number three, they're harmless. Okay, I hate to keep doing this, and I said I wasn't going to just pause the video and look at it, but this thing right here, 
I keep saying this over and over again, but that is a giant centipede, and those things are not, they are not harmless, they are the complete and total polar opposite of harmless. Okay, to anybody watching this who is interested in what a giant centipede can do, look right over at, towards the front of the thing. You might be confused by the weird looking legs going on back here, back here in the back. I don't, think, I don't know if you can see my mouse or not. But over towards the front, you know, where the, closer to the three is the back of it. But you look over to the other side of it, that's its face, right? You see the antennae here. Below the antennae are a pair of large mandibles. And those things, what they do is they clamp down on prey or on a person's skin, and th and holds it in place, while smaller fangs underneath actually bite the person. And they can bite as long as they are grappled on. Now, I may be wondering, okay, so what's going on with the back here, with the two other legs that look sort of like the antennae? Well, this is a defense mechanism, where it will trick out a predator into thinking that the two legs on its backside are actually its antennae, meaning that that's its head. So the pr unsuspecting predator goes after that side of it, thinking that it's aiming for the head, when in reality, it's going for its tail. And those two legs will grab onto the predator while the actual head of the thing spins around, latches onto the predator, and bites it. So, these things are nowhere near harmless. These are dangerous and they can definitely cause harm if provoked. Back to the video. The hum, centipedes are harmless. Insects like spiders and bed bugs, they can bite your skin, which can cause a painful or itchy rash. Cockroaches can get into your food and spread disease. Ants will make your food inedible. Flies are unsanitary and they love to land on your food. Bees sting, that's painful. Centipedes, they don't really do much. They don't want to eat your food. They have no stingers to hurt you. They don't want to eat you. They can't fly around landing on food that's left out in the open. Centipedes do have fang. Before we continue on with the video again, that right there is a much better shot of what the face of the centipede actually looks like. See, see the large, the large mandibles right here? Yeah. Does that look harmless to you? Okay, maybe the actual house centipede, let's see if I go back a few seconds, yeah, that thing, yeah, it has the mandibles, but they're much smaller, so they don't, I don't think they'll do much to you. But the big guy right here has big mandibles and, and large fangs that could actually hurt you. So, that's a problem. And you and they're like I said, the polar opposite of the word harmless. They are so small they can't pierce your skin. Also, centipedes don't often seek out humans to bite the way that bed bugs do. Number four, the Jap. Okay, before we go into what Japan does, once again they showed several images of actual giant centipedes, which, like I keep saying over and over again, are actually quite dangerous. So, more to the point though, they got one thing right. Centipedes, no matter if they're the giant desert or simply giants, and, I, and I'm assuming the house centipede either, they're not actively seeking you out. So if you encounter one in the wild, they're more than likely going to try to get away from you and won't attack you unless they feel provoked. So they got one thing right. That these things aren't human hunters. They don't actively seek you out. So, that is, that, that's true. They're not actively hunting you down. So, therefore, if you see one in the wild, unless you get close to it, unless you really, you know, scare it, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. But, alas... That does not mean that they're safe to have in your house, especially if it's a giant desert centipede or a giant centipede in your house. 
Yeah, it won't attack you unless it feels scared or provoked. But if you try to get rid of it or get too close to it, it could still very well and very easily bite you and do a lot of harm. So this does not mean that these things are safe to have around, by any means. So I don't care if, I mean, maybe the house centipede might not bite you, alright? Which is actually still false. As I've read in the comment section of this video before starting recording, some people talking about how they got bit and had allergic reactions to it. So, n this thing is still... I don't think it would be really that painful to be bitten by that small of a thing. But, you know, like I said earlier about the about allergic reactions, these things could still hurt you a lot in terms of how your body reacts to it. Especially considering if these things, you know, can... Like any allergy, there's potential chance of severe and adverse reactions. So therefore... I don't want the house in a peat anywhere near me as it could bite me and I could be allergic to it. So that's not good, okay? Man, these arguments are really not good. The Japanese keep centipedes as pets and have for centuries. If you visit Japan, you might hear the term geji geji. You'd hear the Japanese use this term to describe their pet. These pets aren't typical pets like cats, dogs, or hamsters. Geji Geji means centipedes in Japanese. Many people keep them as pets in their home. Some people keep them in cages. Others give their Geji Geji full run of the house. These pets may not be able to protect the home, and they won't snuggle up with you on the couch. However, the people who own Geji Geji still love their pets. For centuries, the Japanese have under- That screenshot right here is an image from Brave Wilderness's video on the giant desert centipede. So, once again, not harmless. And honestly, this is kind of like that whole Peppa Pig episode that was banned in Australia. Because in that Peppa Pig episode, it, they were teaching kids that it was okay to play with spiders and that spiders were safe to handle. When in Australia, they have a spider that can that when it, if it bites you can literally kill you within an hour if you don't get treatment immediately so there of course was no telling of what it could do to a kid who you know doesn't have a strong of immune system and isn't fully grown i feel like the same thing applies here because if somebody mistakes the images of the actual harmful centipedes mistakes those for how centipedes th that could be potentially life-threatening if like I said these things people are allergic to them or potentially dangerous if the thing bites them because you know a kid if they watch this video could think oh centipedes are completely okay to handle now and then find one of these giant centipedes pick it up and get bitten that's of course, not good. That's incredibly dangerous. And I'm sure that parents of kids would not want their kids to be picking up and holding dangerous insects. Or just because like they confused it with something that's not as dangerous. You know, that not as being the actual house centipede. So that's... Not good, that's teaching kids that it's okay to handle potentially dangerous creatures. And and even if they're not kids watching this video, it could still, you know, misinform them into thinking that the centipedes found outdoors are actually okay to handle. They're not. And now on to the actual Japanese thing. I honestly don't care what Japan keeps as a pet. Honestly, if you keep centipedes as pets, all power to you. But at the same time, I'm not interested in keeping these things as pets. And with the actual house centipede, I don't care that much about it. 
if it's in my house, like I said earlier, I don't care if it's a clean insect that's not going to spread illness. It's still in my house. And bugs don't belong in my house. Okay? So if you keep these things as your pets, all power to you. Okay? That's cool. And honestly, with the, with the Japanese, it could be a cultural thing. So if you want to keep them in your house... That's your personal choice and your own personal preference of what you want to keep as your pet. But that's not an argument just because a certain culture does. That's not an argument to your average, everyday person who doesn't have an interest in exotic pets or in keeping insects as pets. There's not an interest there because it doesn't. it's not like a dog where a dog... Can, you know, you can do things with it, like take it on walks, play with it. You know, I don't see myself coming home every day after a long day of school and sitting down next to my centipede and telling about all the tr troubles in life. Yeah, even if you do it with dogs, if, if you vent to dogs, the dog can't really respond to it. The dog isn't really going to, you know, be able to empathize with you or give you advice or whatever. But still... Dogs are seen as comfort animals, and they can help you out in a pinch, get over things like, you know, troubles going on with the day. So, I don't see the same thing happening with a centipede. If you try to hug a centipede, it's going to get crushed. So, I don't care what other cultures have for their exotic pets. All power to you if you decide to keep a house centipede as a pet. But just because somebody else does, doesn't mean it's good for everybody. Killing the centipedes in your house can actually save you money. This is one of the best reasons not to kill the centipedes you find in your house. If you have a bug infestation of any kind, whether it be spiders, ants, bed bugs, cockroaches, or silverfish, you need to get rid of the problem as quickly as possible. Allowing those bugs to live in your home is extremely unsanitary. They can get into your food and your drinks. They can also get into your bed and on your skin, causing rashes and bites on your body. To get rid of these infestations, some homeowners will go the DIY route. And that can be effective sometimes, but it doesn't always work. Most homeowners don't know much about pest extermination. If you use too much poison, that could be dangerous for everybody in the house. If you don't use enough, the extermination process won't be effective. Also, certain types of bugs require a certain method to eradicate them. All right, I'm not going to watch any more of this video. Th this is just stupid. Okay, I see how, if not done correctly, you know, you could still unintentionally allow an insect infestation to survive. I get that. Which is why we have things like the internet to help us research things like this. So be prepared if something like this happens. So if you have like an infestation of a certain insect, you look up, okay, how do I kill it? And then you find your results and then you do it. I get that too much poison could potentially endanger you and that not enough could allow the thing to survive. But at the same time, if you do your research and handle the situation correctly, you can correctly kill the insect without having to rely on, you know, centipedes. Like I said earlier, or, well, let's actually just go into another hypothetical. Okay, suppose that I have a colony of ants that has decided to make its nest in my house. What would be a more effective way of dealing with this situation? Waiting around for a centipede to eventually stumble upon the ants? Which could take, you know, as long as the centipede wants to, you know, bef it, the, centipede, the centipede isn't just going to instantly lock on to the exact location of the ant's nest. It's going to take time for the centipede to, you know, find the nest and then deal with the situation. So would you rather wait around for an, a centipede to take care of your pest situation for you, or would you rather deal with it yourself and go out to the store and buy something that's, you know, made for the sole purpose of dealing with ants or other bugs. 
and then spraying it on there and seeing results within hours. Or we're taking the time consuming rounds and waiting who knows how long for a centipede to show up. So, you know, would you rather have that happen? Would you rather wait around or would you rather deal with it yourself? Honestly, in, in my eyes, it's much more beneficial to, you know, deal with the problem yourself. Sure, it might cost a little chunk of your wallet to afford different uh, insect killing supplies. Sure, some of these things can be expensive. But in the long run, the thing pays for itself when you're exterminating pests inside your home. It sort of pays for itself. The, the centipede, like I said, it doesn't always know where the threat is. It's going to have to take its time to find it. It's not like something you go to the store and buy... Like a room, it's not like a Roomba which will uh, just scoot around the floor and sweep up stuff. Yeah, it takes a time, but it'll do it eventually. With the centipede, it's a living creature, meaning it can do what it wants. And when it wants to, it has it's it has a bug brain, which means that it's an and it's an animal, and animals typically do what animals want to do. So, it could completely ignore the situation at hand and completely avoid any encounter with the ants or whatever problem you have. Meaning, it's going to be better to deal with the situation yourself. Because, like I said, there are things out there that are meant to kill insects. Or that are created specifically to kill insects. Which is a lot better than waiting for a centipede to do it for you. Now, I don't... Since centipedes are just bugs and they have bug brains, they, I don't think you can train a centipede on how to hunt down and kill pests. They're not super intelligent. They're not intelligent creatures. So, they're not really trainable, you know? Anyway, this video has been nothing but a crappy slideshow of random centipede facts that don't have any pertaining to your actual life. That you don't need a centipede, a house centipede in your house to really benefit you. And even if the actual house centipede is harmless to you, or at least it's relatively harmless to you, in the long run, what's the point of having it? Just get, it, They don't have that long of life cycle, so they'll just be around for a bit and then die. So if you treat them like pets and you get attached to them, well, sorry to burst your bubble, but the thing's probably not going to last but a couple weeks. They're not permanent pets. It's like taking a cricket on the side of the street picking it up and taking it home and, and raising it for a bit. Sure, it'll survive for a while, but it'll eventually die. While with things like dogs and cats, they will survive for years. Our cats survived for, they were going on 18 when they eventually passed away. So that's a long life cycle. With the bugs, you don't have that. You know? So, I don't care if you want to keep these things as your pets. That's that's your decision. And honestly, I'll power on you. I'll power to you if you want to. But me personally, I don't see how having a centipede in my house benefits me. Because it's not going to be a good pet. And if you're using it for the purpose of insect extermination, there's much better ways of exterminating insects than simply relying on another insect to take care of it for you. Anyway guys, I want to thank you again for all of your support on my channel. Honestly, I mentioned just not too long ago that we were almost at 50 geeks. And then, here we are. Thank you guys so much for all your support on my channel. It means a lot to me. Anyway guys, thanks again for watching. 
be sure to check the description of the video of the video for a link to the video I talked about here. Anyway, guys, thanks again for watching, and as always, Max of the Beast is out.